the Holy Scriptures as the revealed will of God and, and the all-sufficient rule of faith and practice. For the purpose of maintaining general unity, we adopt the following statements as fundamental truths. We affirm our faith in the Bible. We, we believe, believe the Bible to be the inspired and holy and fallible and authoritative word of God. We affirm our faith in God. We believe that there is one God eternally existent in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We affirm our faith and repentance. We believe that the only means of being cleansed from sin is through repentance and faith in the precious blood of Christ. We affirm our faith in the resurrection. We believe in the resurrection of both the saved and the lost, the one to everlasting life and the other to everlasting damnation. We affirm our faith in salvation. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Spirit is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing of the human body and answer to believing in prayer. We affirm our faith in sanctification. We believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy life. We affirm our faith in the Holy Spirit. We believe that the baptism of the Holy Spirit, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to the believers who ask for it. We believe that the manifestation and the operation of the fruit of the Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit are for today and until the Lord returns. Amen. 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 Glory. We're uh, revisiting hypertension. So, if your blood pressure is measured in a medical facility on three separate occasions mm -hmm. and your readings are high, you have hypertension. Mm -hmm. In some cases, people have what is called white coat syndrome. This means the blood pressure rises when the idea of a white coat or a doctor is present in the mind. There are blood pressure monitors which are worn for 24 hours with blood pressure readings to be averaged out at the end of the monitoring period for proper diagnosis. When looking at the chart below on this paper, keep in mind that the guidelines for people aged 65 and older 
has been raised to 140 over 90. The tip is caffeine can raise your blood pressure, so it should be limited. After you've done all you can to stand, stand there for it. Health and wellness counts as a blessing to be able to provide these tips for temple maintenance to help you stand. God bless. Praise the Lord, saints. I guess I got to be with the coffee. I did not know that it raises your blood pressure. Yes. Amen. Let's get you some decaf. Amen. I just... Okay. <laughs> I hope if I get decaf, I may as well not drink Thank you for the cafe. That's my quicker picker up. Amen. But we will be aware and regulate. Amen. That's why we have health and their wellness. They're not to entertain us. They're actually here to help us and inform us. Amen. So I will take heed. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. The word of God is going to come to us through one of our own minister, Anita. Amen. Amen. And as you continue in prayer, I wonder if you lift your hand and say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Preach the word. Preach the word. Minister Anita. Minister Anita.
Father, we thank you for your faithfulness towards us, because you're a mighty good God. And Father, we welcome you into this service today, oh God. Come on in, Holy Spirit, have your way. Walk up and down these aisles, in and out these pews. Do what you want to do. Have your way in this place today. Lord, let your will be done, not our will be done today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray, oh God, that you use me to thy glory, to bless your people. May I decrease as you increase, and may you get the glory out of all that is said and done. Hallelujah. We praise you and we honor you at all times and all things. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. God be the glory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, our, my text will be taken from two passages of Scripture. And when you find them, may you stand for the reading of the word. Proverbs chapter 16, verse 9. And the book of Psalms. Psalms 37 and verse 23. Proverbs 16 and 9. Psalms 37 and 23. Everybody have it? Say amen. amen. And it reads as, A man's heart devises his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. That's Proverbs 16 and 9. Psalms 37 and 23 reads as, The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, Amen. and he delighteth in his way. May God have the blessing to the reading of his word. You may be seated. Amen. The title of this sermon God gave to me a couple of months ago. It's called Stepping Stones. Right. Stepping Stones. And you could... Say the stepping stones we have in our life, stepping stones are things that we go through in our everyday life. Some come up unaware, and some come up that we know about, that are hard to deal with. Those are what God told me, our stepping stones. And then there's another way that you can look at stepping stones. God has stepping stones in the kingdom. For all his people, for his believer, God has stepping stones as well as the world has stepping stones. God has stepping stones. And there are times in our lives when God will challenge us with things of the world. Sometimes he will allow negative things to come up. Mm -hmm. You may even have to deal with some negative people. And on your job, in the marketplace, in the gym, wherever you may go, and sometimes even in your family you may have to deal with some negative people and some negative things that they may say. I know this, this past week, a friend of mine from Columbus, Ohio, she called me and she said, I need your help. She said, I need your prayers. I said, what's going on? She said, my husband is in a nursing home and they've been to put him on hospice. She said, the nursing home had me to come in and to meet with them and they they put all these things before me that I had to do in order for him to stay there. I have to do this and I have to do this. I have to pay this and I have to pay that. I says, well, what did the hospice agency say? She said, they gave me a choice. She said, they told me I could leave him there in the nursing home or either I could take him home and take, him, take care of him there until he passed. I say, are you able to do that? She said, yes, I can. She said, but I want your advice. Since you did hospice and you've been in a nurse home, I said, yeah, I know what they're asking you for. I said, I know what you can do. I said, are you asking me my advice? She said, yes, I want to know. I said, take your husband home. Take care of him. I said, have the hospice agency to bring in a hospice nurse two to three times a week. Tell them what you need at home, a hospice bed, a bed table. Tell them you need hospice aides to come and take care of him, give him a bath. I said, they give him a couple of hours in your home a week. I said, that would be easier for you to do that than to give up everything you own and possess because that's what the nursing home wants. They want your home, they want your cars, they want your money, they want everything. Right, right. I say, 
You and your husband work a long time to get what you got. And you don't have to give it over to the enemy or to the world. I say, that's my suggestion to you. She said, well, my sister said, and my friend said, and this one said, that I should leave him in a nursing home, and I should do this. I said, don't let people help make your decisions for you. I said, you need to pray about it. Amen. Ask God Amen. what he wants you to do. I said, but you ask me my opinion? I said, that's my godly opinion to you. Amen. Take your husband home. <clears throat> Quit listening to the negative Amen. from the world. People of the world not say, don't know God, but they're going to give you some advice? I don't think so. You know, sometimes we have to really seek God because even our own families, her own daughter was coming against her, telling her, you know, you ought to leave him there. La, 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 la. I says, you know, you know, sometimes our own families speak against us. Whatever is fighting against you, Whatever is working against you, you know, God put these things in our path as stepping stones. And whatever people are saying to you that you should do or should not do or you can't do, you can remind those familiar spirits. <laughs> That's what they are, familiar spirits. You can speak to those spirits and say, God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, Amen. Philippians 4.13. And you can tell those spirits in Romans 8.37, in all things, I am more than a conqueror. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In him that loves me. Hallelujah. Amen. Speak to those spirits. Let them know who you are in Christ. And let them know they don't have no authority and no victory over you. Because Luke said in God said in Luke 10, 19, I have given you authority to tread over scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing, absolutely nothing shall by any means hurt you. We got to listen to God. We got to walk in our saints. You know, not just here in this church and these walls. You got to take that word and use it in your everyday life. Because the enemy ain't going to never stop being a devil. We got to be stronger than him. And fight back. Because God has given us that authority. He means for you to use it. God ain't going to come down here and do something he done told you you could do. That's right. Know that he that is in you, he gives you the power to tread over scorpions and serve him. He wouldn't have told you that if he wasn't going to give you the power to do it. That's right. Know that God is with you. Know that God will take you through every stepping stone that we come up against. Because one thing about those stepping stones, they have come. But they can't stay. Amen. They too will pass. This has come to pass. It will pass in the name of Jesus. Amen. Know that God loves you so much. He ain't going to leave you in that place of lowliness. No, he's not. That's right. He's going to take care of you. He will take you through everything if you allow him to. It starts in the mind. Everything starts in the mind with a thought. You know? Where is your thinking? Where is your thinking? You know, don't let the enemy rob you of what God has blessed you with in and through his word, you know. Because he will steal everything that God has given you through the word. If you allow it. You can't allow the enemy to take control over your thoughts or your mind. You've got to be strong in the Lord. Know who you are in Christ Jesus. Fight that devil. Fight them things. Tell them what the word says and make them bow down. Rebuke those spirits in Jesus' name. He's giving you the spirit to rebuke the devil. Rebuke them. Put them under your feet in the name of Jesus. Take authority and walk it out through the power and the love of God. You know, but there are some things that we have to go through in life that we really don't have no control of. That we have to accept some of these things that come upon us, like the loss of a loved one, or a job, or a friend. You know, we have to learn to accept these things as they come upon us. And sometimes, no, it's not easy. It's not easy, it's hard. That's right. Especially when you lose a loved one, but we don't have no control over that. Only God has control over that. You know, we have to know that God is still with us. And John 16 and 33, it says, These things have I spoken unto you, that ye may have peace. So God knows we're going to go through things. That's right. He knows they're going to shake us a little bit first. Uh -huh. But he said, be at peace. Yes. 
I want you to be at peace and let me handle this thing for you. He uh -huh. says, in the world ye shall have tribulations. He told you right there, you're going to have tribulations. Uh -huh. But be of good cheer. For I have overcome the world. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. He's already overcome yeah. the world for us. Yeah. And yeah. shake it off. Thank you. Shake it off. Yeah. You know, like when Franklin called me the other day, she says, Need, I need you to pray with me. I say, what's going on? She said, my son had a stroke Friday morning. I said, why are you just not calling me? She said, I had to deal with the shock of it. She said, my son ain't but 40 years old. Mm -hmm. And she said, it just shook me so. She said, I had to deal with the reality of it. And sometimes these things, they do shock us, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. and, and we have to get ourselves together. Yeah. So I prayed with her, prayed for our family and her son. But I can imagine the shock of your child yeah. at a young age having a heart attack or a stroke. These are major, you know, diseases and things that come upon us. But God says in Psalms 34, 19, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many, many, many. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord will deliver him out of all of them. Oh, thank God for his goodness. He said, I'll deliver you out of all of them. God uses these things as stepping stones. Draw us nearer to him. Yes, yes. Make us bow down unto him. He tells us in Isaiah 41 and 13. I love this passage. I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand and say unto you, fear not. God said, don't get scared. Don't get nervous. I'm with you. I got you. Got you in the palm of my hand. He will be right there with you. He will help you through it. He wants you to call on him. That's why he says, ask. He says, ask me for my help. Yes, yes, ask and you yes, shall receive. Yes, yes, Seek and you shall find. Yes, Knock and the door shall open. Matthew 7 and 7. God also says, God loves you so much. He says, I want you to learn how to live these things in the kingdom. The kingdom way. These are God's stepping stones. When he teaches us how to live it his way in the kingdom of God. They are lessons of his instructions of how we should live in the kingdom of God. Yes. Hallelujah. And one thing about God's instruction, they're sure. That's right. They ain't shaky. Amen. It ain't sometimes. It ain't it fall apart. Amen. It won't happen. His instructions are sure yes. and they always come to pass. Yes. Because he's yes. God, yes. Almighty, the Creator. He created everything. Us, yes. the world, yes. they that dwell therein, the heavenly. He created it all. Yeah. He knows everything that's going to happen to us before it even happens. Yeah. Glory be to God. Yeah. Because God says in Deuteronomy 8 and 3, hallelujah, that a man, that, that a man doeth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. We're supposed to live by his word. Every word that comes out of his mouth yeah. is in that book. Because your character is developed through the hard times and through the difficult times. That's how he builds our character, how he teaches us and show him, us his wisdom. He shows us his knowledge. He gives us strength to go through and he gives us his understanding. Sometimes that's why we go through some of the things. He laid it on your heart Why you're going through. Sometimes he does and sometimes he not, but he's God. Yes. And he does what he wants to do. Yeah. Isaiah 40, 28 and 29 says, Hast thou not known, hast thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, faint is not, neither does he weary. God don't faint. He don't get weary like we do. He don't get stressed out like we do. He don't get bent out of shape and start saying things out of his mouth that he shouldn't like we do. <laughs> He's not like us. He says, my ways are not your ways and my thoughts are not your thoughts. He says, I ain't like you He's bigger. He's greater than we are. He is the great I am. He is the Alpha and Omega. Hallelujah. He is the creator. Hallelujah. He said, there is none searching of his understanding. There is no searching of his understanding. He gives power to the faith, to them that have no might. He increases their strength. And in verse 31 it says, and they that wait upon the Lord, the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up wings like an eagle. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. How are they going to do all this? Because God going to give them the strength. 
He gonna gird you up with his strength. So you won't get weary. Yeah. So you won't fall when you start to run. He's going to empower you with history. He says finally in Ephesians 6 and 9, be strong, my brother. Yeah. Be strong. And in the power of his might. Because yeah. he know we weak. Yeah. He know our flesh. So that's why he says be strong. Be strong. And in the power of his might. Yeah. And he is right there for us to take us through every difficult situation. But just remember that too shall pass. It didn't come to stay. That's right. It must pay. Right. Hallelujah. Right. Hallelujah. And as those things come to us and enter into our lives and we have to deal with them, God says, you must never forget what he brought you from. We must never forget what he has brought you through. You must never forget where he is taking you to. God wants you to remember the stepping stones that you've been through. God wants us to show him gratitude for the lessons that he has taught us. Because you should learn something through each circumstance and each situation that you go through. And a lot of times we go through something, we don't know how to handle it. Or what we should actually do about it. Or who's there to help us. But when you pray and ask God to help you, you're asking him, you're seeking for him. He will lead you to the right person. He will tell you who to go to to get your help that you need. He works through us as people. Thank you, Lord. So the Lord will help us. That's how he helps us. That's how he teaches us. So that not only does he teach us his lessons, but when you learn your lessons, be there for somebody else to help pull them up when they don't know how to go through that thing that you've already been through, that you can help them up. Teach them. Mm -hmm. That's what God wants. That's what being there for one another is all about. Help us to help one another so we can learn his lessons, his stepping stones in the kingdom of God mm -hmm. to show somebody else. Now, we ought to have our own personal memorial of what God has brought us from. Yes. We ought to have our own personal memorial of what God has brought us through mm -hmm. and where he's taking you to. I have a notebook started years ago with my grandchildren. Pray about it, ask God about it, tell them about the situation, page after page. Not only that situation, but other situations. And then when the God has answered that prayer, I write it down, it's done. It's okay. done. I go to the next page, start on something else. My son, God, praying for my son. God hears our prayers. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Honor him with your own personal. Yes. Just like God yes. touched and brought the children of Israel, he brought them through slavery mm -hmm. from Egypt, mm -hmm. took them through the Red Sea, yes. got them across, uh -huh. closed it up so Pharaoh couldn't get to them. Praise uh -huh. God, praise mm -hmm. God. Hallelujah. Took them through the wilderness, you know, delivered them. <laughs> into the promised land. Some of them died off in the wilderness. Those that didn't believe in trust, they died off in the wilderness. But those that believed, he took them through the wilderness and he got them through to their promised land, you know? So God wants us to have our own personal memorial. And he wanted Israel to have a personal memorial too for the things that he had done for them. And that memorial was the Ark of the Covenant. And the Ark of the Covenant also was known as a testimony. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, this was the most sacred thing that Israel had concerning the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. You know, this Ark of the Covenant, it was of great, great value. Uh -huh. You know, you may have some things in your home or you may have bought some antiques that were really high priced and valuable. But that's the way they felt about the Ark of the Covenant. But even more so. Yes. Because God was in it. That's right. God was in this ark, you know. You know, uh, it was a wooden box, maybe about that long. I don't actually know the dimensions of it, but it was a wooden box, you know. And in this wooden box, the top of the box was the mercy seat. Uh -huh. It was a golden lid. Uh -huh. It was placed on top of the ark. Mm -hmm. It had two cherubims, one on each side of yeah, the ark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And at each end mm -hmm. of this ark covenant. It created a space on the inside. And this space was for Yahweh. Mm -hmm. 
the Lord God, the Spirit of the Lord. And it said that Yahweh, the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord, dwelled within the ark. His spirit was there. That's why it was so valuable. That's, That's right. why it was so great. Because That's the spirit right. of the Lord, he dwelled there. Yeah. Hallelujah. It was, it was just awesome to know that he's among his people. Yeah. You know, and it was so sacred. Couldn't nobody touch it. Mm -hmm. Only the priest could go in. Mm -hmm. And they could only go in one time a year, you know. Right. And with the Jewish, it was an atonement for sin in the Old Testament. Right. He would go in and they would have a lamb unblemished that they would slay. And he would sprinkle the blood. Sprinkle the blood on the mercy seat, you know. And that made an atonement for the blood, yeah. for the people. Yeah. But the priest had to be in right standing with God, too. Yeah. Yeah. Because if the priest wasn't in, they had bells on the bottom of their robe. Yeah. And you could hear these bells. Yeah. But if the priest was in there and he was in there for a long time and you didn't hear them bells and something went wrong, you know something was wrong with the priest. That's right. And they had a rope around his, his body and they put him on out of there and right. he wasn't right. Yeah. right. So you couldn't go before God any kind of way. Right. You had to have a special way. You had to reference God. Right. You had to be clean. You had clean hands and a clean heart That's to go right. before God. Yeah. So you just couldn't go in there no any kind of way, you know? And so this was sacred. And they took it perfect because it was perfect. That's right. You can't go in there. You don't mess with God. Because yeah. he'll, he'll shut you down. Yeah. Back in those days, God didn't mind swaying somebody. How right. right. he just he thought he did it in the eye of the He he said, Y'all lie. Bam. That's he right. got him out of there. That's you didn't right. pray with God back then. That's right. He has given us so much oh, mercy right. and so right. much grace, oh, you know? My God. Unreal. My God. For some of the my things God. going on now. I believe that God, God is going to get tired. He's going to get tired. He's going to shut him down. It's only a matter of God's time before he shut him down. So that young people was the most holiest day of the year because that's when they made their atonement for sin. You know, so that Ark of the Covenant was very sacred, you know, uh, for the Israelites. And inside that Ark, that Ark contained four things. The first thing it had, it had a gold jar of manna. That's how God fed the people from day to day with the Man, and that gold jar was in the ark. Also, there was Aaron's rod, which had a lot of power. That rod was God had given Aaron power through that rod, through the plague that was going through Egypt. It protected the people, so that rod was in the ark as well. Then they had they had the two tablets of the Ten Commandments that God had given to Moses. That was in the ark also. But the central symbol of the space inside the ark of the covenant was for the presence of God. Yes. The presence of God dwell there for his people. So we ought to all have our own personal memorial to remind us of the things that God has delivered us from, for the things that God has brought you through, and for the things where God is taking you to. Yes. Yes. Pray and give it for the Lord. Yes. Spend time with him. Worship and praise him. He'll tell you what he wants you to do in the kingdom of God. Give thanks at all times. Yes. Give thanks time. for your stepping stones. Give yes. thanks. Yes. God gives, you know, to us things that are happening. But one thing about God, He knows what's going to happen before it even happens. Mm -hmm. God wants us, hallelujah, to live in His purpose and to let His light shine through us. Yes. Psalms 119, 105 says, David said, The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. The word is a lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. His word, it lights up our daily path, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. The word of God lights up our daily path with God. Hallelujah. And he gives us his stepping stones. He gives us daily instructions. If you listen and pay attention. If you put him first, give him the first fruits of your day before you even get started. Give God the first fruits of your day. Yes, yes. Listen to him. He has something to say. That's right. But are we listening? Come on. Listen. He will guide you in all things. Yes. Even the things that come up as a surprise. Uh -huh. He'll tell you what to do about it. That's right. It may shake you at first, but shake it off. Uh -huh. And hear what the Spirit telling you what to do mm -hmm. to make that wrong right. What the devil meant for evil, God will turn it around for your good. Yeah. And God will make it right if you listen to him. Amen. He wants our light to shine before men out here in the world. Yes. 
He wants us. The, he's put his love in us. He's put his spirit in us. He's given us everything we need to perform his purpose in us through the kingdom of God. And his purpose is for us to help others, to encourage others, to be the lifter of their head. God endows us with his power so we can work through, pray for people, to get some people saved. To get someone delivered, set free that don't know how to get themselves yeah. set free or delivered. Yeah. He uses us. He gives us that power yeah. to use to help that person, not for us, yeah. so that we can stick our chest out of it. No, God wants us to be able to help one another. Yes. To show them the way, yeah. God's way. Yeah. And they will in turn be able to help somebody else. It's yeah. like something that multiplies dominoes. Teach one and you can teach the other, you know. Lay hands on the sick and pray that they recover or to heal them so that they may be whole mm -hmm. and heal from their sickness. Yes. And one thing God showed me, sometimes we be praying for people, especially those that have been sick or in the hospital. Mm -hmm. Yes, we want them to get well. Yes, yes we want them to recover. Yes. Yes. But God knows mm -hmm. what he wants right. for that person. Right. His will will be done. Yeah. Even he's going to restore them heal them so they can finish his work here on the earth or even he will take them from mortal to immortality he will heal them in heaven they will be free of all pain no more surgery no more doctors no more bills they will be healed and made whole in heaven with God I said wow that's awesome That's awesome. so it's not that God didn't heal them He took them on to be with him because he had something else on them to do with him in heaven. God has his way of doing things unlike man, unlike him, us. So we have to follow his instructions. Yes. We have to follow the godly stepping stones, what he wants us to do in the kingdom. You know, uh, we all have made mistakes and we all have fallen, Mr. Mark, you know, at some point in our lives. And in Psalms 145.14 it says, The Lord uphold all that follow. So he, all of us that have fallen, God upholds us. And he raises us up. All those that are bowed down, he raises them up. And falling really is a natural part of our learning. Because if we didn't fall, how would we learn? <clears throat> so falling is really a part of our everyday life. When we fall, Yeah, we can get down and out. We get discouraged. But the Spirit of the Lord said he will raise us up. That's why it pays to know the word of God. Yeah. Repent. Lord, I'm sorry. Lord, I don't know how to do that thing. Lord, I need your help. Teach me, Lord. Show me what I should do about this and that. And, the other. and God's how God raises us back up, you know. You may fall down, but get back up. And the Chinese have an old saying that says you fall down. Seven times, but get back up, eh? In other words, don't stay down. Get back up. Get back up, you know. Proverbs 24, 16 says, A just man falls seven times and raises up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. And when you perceive things God's way, he puts his super power on your natural. And it becomes his supernatural way of functioning in us. For us to learn his humility, for us to learn obedience, and for us to be able to give things over totally to him. This is his way of teaching us the God way, the stepping stones of God. God gives us his righteousness, and this means that being in right standing with God, that's a good thing to be in right standing with God. My God, that lets you know when you're in right standing with God, and he lets you know that you're in right standing with him, mm -hmm. that's an awesome thing. Yeah. Yeah. Not that we should grow in it, but knowing that God is with us yeah. and he's going to instruct us. Right. Right. But when you go through hard times and bad situations, how you go through is very important. Yeah. That's me, really how you go through. Yeah. Yeah. When you go through and leave God out, Yeah. You got a problem. Yeah. <laughs> you encounter more things going wrong and more changes going about than you would have ever if you would just sit down and talk to God first. If you had included him in, you wouldn't go through all this difficulty 
trying to do it on your own. Amen. God would have shown you the way, the right way, his way. And when you go through, your attitude is important. Amen. We need to go through with a right spirit and with a right attitude. And I tell you, saints, that's one of my daily prayers because God knows my heart. I need help. And I'll be praying, Lord, give me a right spirit today. Give me a right attitude. Because I know how the enemy is. He'll throw things up in your face. And you'll be saying, okay. You may get mad. I may get mad. But you prayed, Arnita, for a right spirit and a right attitude. So God helps me with my attitude. And thinking things right. Yeah, it may, you know, make me a little upset and, you know, all of that. But I get over it. Because I'm allowing the God spirit. Because I pray for a right spirit uh -huh. and a right attitude uh -huh. to get over and yeah. to keep it moving. And that's important. <laughs> yeah. When you believe God and trust God to turn your your humanistic mind around to his God thinking, yeah. God put it in your heart. He put it in your spirit. Uh -huh. He put it in your thinking. Because everything starts with a thought. Yes. Know that God's thinking. He says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. So think not that God, God is with you. And he'll give you the right thoughts. He'll help you make the right choices and the right decisions, you know. So we have to trust him and lean to his understanding and not that of our own. And when you go through with a bad spirit or a bad attitude, you start thinking of resentful things. You start thinking bitter. You start being jealous and envious of things or people or cooperations, whatever it may be. Small example. Um, Sue got this job and you didn't. You applied for it like she did. But she got the job. But you mad at her because she got the job and you didn't. Mm. Wrong attitude. Mm -hmm. Wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. God says rejoice with those that rejoice and cry with those that cry. You know? And when you have this bad attitude and you're bitter and you're angry, mm -hmm. all it does is stress you out. Yeah. All it does is make you more angry. All it does is increase your blood pressure. All it does is prolong your suffering from day to day. And you wonder, how come I had to go through this? Why this didn't happen? Why God didn't hear my prayer? Why? Because you got a wrong spirit and you got a wrong attitude. When you allow God to come in and change your spirit and change your attitude, things will change around you. But you got to yield yourself and your spirit to the Lord. Because he knows your heart. You can't fool God. You can fool people, but you can't fool God. Because he knows your heart anyway. So the best thing to do, line up with God. Let his stepping stones enter into your life and into your pathway. So you can line up. And so that he can do something for you, you know, to give you a right spirit. But when you got a right spirit and a right attitude, you focus on the right things. The God things. The way God would have you to think about that thing. Oh, Sue, so I'm so happy you got that job. I applied for it too, but it's okay. You know, I'm glad you got the job. I hope you do well. You know, that's the God's spirit. And if you're really sincere about what you're saying, you know, you're thinking God's way of doing things and not about the problem or not about the, per the person. You know, God and the Holy Spirit, God helps you to learn how to be a bigger person. And a better person. He gives you right thoughts. He increases your growth in him and through the word. He makes you become a better person. You know, and God will promote you. You may have not, you may not have gotten that job, but just know that another job is coming along. And it might be even better and bigger and paying more money than that that you was applying for. So know that God has his timing on our lives for everything that we go through. There's a time, a set time in God's kingdom for each and every one of us. And as we grow in the righteousness of God, he will take you higher. You know, like he did his servant in Matthew 25, 23. God says, the Lord said unto him, his servant, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yeah. servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Can you imagine entering into the joy of the Lord? So when God bless you with this job that's bigger and paying more, oh, I know you're going to be joyful. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to rejoice in the Lord and say, thank yes. you, Jesus. Yes. Because God put you there. Yes. When God puts you there, yes. 
ain't nothing man can do to remove you Amen. when God put you there. When God be ready to remove you, he'll let you know. Amen. But when God puts you there, he can't touch it. As they used to say, can't touch that. Can't touch that. Because God put you there. And you know it's God. Hallelujah. And ain't nothing they can, they might not even like you. But God will turn on their minds and on their hearts and persuade that man's mind, the manager, to hire you for that job. Because God did. God touched his heart. God touched his mind. You know. But, and that's the power of God working for us and through us, God Amen. does miraculous things. Yeah. Just like he did Joseph. Jo Joseph had stepping stones in his life. Mm -hmm. He had a dream. He was chosen by God. God had purpose for his life. Mm -hmm. uh, he was blessed and highly favored. Yeah. But just because you are chosen, favored, and you're highly favored, don't mean you won't go through some stuff. Amen. Just because you're chosen, Highly favored and blessed of God. Amen. Ha, you're going to have some stepping stones That's too. Right. That's right. It doesn't mean everybody's going to like you. Yeah. Just because you're highly favored and chosen, Amen. everybody ain't going to like you. Yeah. And just because you're chosen and highly favored, some people will talk about you. Amen. You know, just because you're chosen and highly favored, there's going to be a whole lot of people that will be jealous and envious of you. Yeah. And just because you're chosen and highly favored, don't mean people are going to treat you right. Everybody ain't going to treat you right. Just because you're chosen and highly favored don't mean they go, not going to lie on you. They will tell lies on you. Joseph has stepping stones. Even though God gave him the dream and though he was blessed and highly favored, those were some of his stepping stones. But one thing about God, as of with us, God didn't tell him. He just told him about the dream. But he didn't tell Joseph that his brothers were going to be jealous of him. That his father was going to make him a coat of many colors. Yeah. So the brothers were jealous of him. God didn't tell him that. Mm -hmm. You know. He was not told that his brothers were going to <coughs> drop him off in a deep pit in a well. God didn't tell him that. He had to go through stepping stones. God did not tell him his brothers were going to sell him into slavery. To the Egyptians. God didn't tell him that. He did not know. Hallelujah. What was. He was going to be bought off the auction block in Egypt by Potiphar. Mm -hmm. God didn't tell him that. Yeah. Joseph did not know Potiphar's wife was going to accuse him of seducing her. Mm -hmm. And then lie on him, told her husband he had seduced her. And then he got put in jail. Mm -hmm. God didn't tell him he was going to go to jail. All these were his stepping stones. But the good thing about Joseph was he trusted God. Right. He trusted God and God was with him. Turn to Genesis chapter 39 right quick, y'all. That's the first book. Y'all can get that real quick. Chapter 39, starting with verse 21. Thirty-nine, twenty-one. Amen. Amen. But the Lord was with Joseph yes. and showed him mercy mm -hmm. and gave him favor in the sight of of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prisons looked not to anything that was under his hands because the Lord was with him. That's the key. Thing. The Lord was with him. And that which he did, the Lord made prosper. So when you, God is with you, and you got a right spirit, and you got a right attitude, God gives you favor with people wherever you go. God is with you. He's controlling your environment. He's controlling the thoughts of the people that you got to deal with. And when you realize that, you ain't got to be boisterous and say a whole lot. Just know that he is with you. Operate in the gift that he has given you. Do what he has told you to do. Be quiet about it. Rejoice in the Lord. And don't question God. Just know God is with you and he's going to move in your behalf. 
Because, you know, Joseph not one time, he never says, woe is me, you know, why I gotta go through this. Yeah, he know that he was accused falsely, you know. He know that people lied on him. But one thing about Joseph, he kept a right spirit and a right attitude. He operated in the plan and the purpose of God in his life because he recognized the plan and the purpose of God in his life. So he operated, you know, in that purpose. And even when he was in jail, there was a butler and a baker in jail with him. Both of them had dreams. He interpreted because he was an interpreter. Both of their dreams and the dreams came to pass. And he just asked them to do one thing for him. Just remember me when you get out. Don't forget about me. Tell the, uh, tell the Pharaoh about me when you get out. But they did not. Just like a lot of people, you know, you pray for them, you go what? And they forget about you. <laughs> but you go on, because you know they're going to come back again. But that's all right. Keep praying for them in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and that was two years later. It, it had went by. And the Pharaoh, he had a dream. But all his magicians of Egypt and all the wise men, he told about the dream, but they could not interpret the dream. But the chief butler, he spoke up one day and says, Pharaoh, he says, I remember when I was in jail, that was a young Hebrew boy that interpreted my dream and the baker's dream. So Pharaoh, he sent for Joseph. And he was, Joseph was taken to him and Pharaoh told Joseph about his dream. And Pharaoh believed what God had showed him. There's the hand of God. All over again, the hand of God, right there in the midst. And the dream simply consisted of uh, Joseph telling Pharaoh there was going to be seven years of uh, good luck and good time in the land, and there was going to be seven years of famine in the land. And Pharaoh says, I need to find a, a godly, discerning man that can handle this and put things in order for when the famine comes. And he asked his servants about him. And his servants says, Get Joseph. He's a deserving man. He just told you. Get Joseph. And so Pharaoh did. Pharaoh then gave Joseph rule over his house. That's right. He gave Joseph the ring on his finger and authority over all Pharaoh's <laughs> servants. He gave Joseph authority over all Egypt. He dressed Joseph in fine linen. Hallelujah. He put a gold chain around his neck. And God was with Joseph. Hallelujah. And blessed him richly. Because he followed the plan of God. Not only did he do that, he gave Joseph two wives and a beautiful home to be in. You know, so God, when you follow his plan, he had many rich blessings for you. Hallelujah. God also blessed Joseph's brothers through Joseph. God blessed his brothers, his family, although they hated on him, got rid of him. But he didn't get mad. He had a right spirit and a right attitude. He blessed Joseph's brothers. He blessed their families and all their people. And, and, and uh, Joseph told his brothers in Genesis 50, 19 and 20, he says, fear not. He said, for am I in the place of God? That blew my mind. He said, am I in the place of God? <laughs> Praise God. He says, but as for you, you thought evil against me, but the Lord meant it unto good to bring things to pass, as even to this day, to save his people alive. Yes, glory to God. Now therefore, fear ye not, verse 21, I will nourish you. This is what he told his brothers. I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them. He didn't talk about them. He didn't talk bad to them or down to them. Tell them all kinds of nasty things. He didn't do that. He says, he spake kindly yes. unto them. Mm -hmm. That's the God way. Those are the God stepping stones. Because he did it with a good heart. Yes. He blessed him, his family, and all the people that were with him in Israel. And that's what God wants us to do. Joseph was a righteous man. He was in right standing with God. He kept his focus. He didn't lose his focus. He didn't get whacked out and act crazy and say foolish things and curse and all. He didn't do none of that. He kept a right spirit and a right attitude, doing things God's way. The stepping stones 
of a good man is ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his ways. The stepping stones increased in Joseph's life as he grew in the Lord, and God promoted him highly. He was with a right spirit and a right attitude. He continued to operate in his God-given gifts. What the devil meant for evil, God turned around for good. Amen. He found the plan of God, and God propelled him into his purpose, like God wants to do with all of us. He wants to propel us into his purpose. And I pray that God will give us all a right spirit and a right attitude and propel us into his plan in the kingdom for each one of us in his time. We can't rush God. God has a time, a set time for everything that he wants done through us and in us on this earth. So don't get impatient. Wait on God, you know, that we will follow his plans and that many will be blessed. Many people will grow stronger and they we will get some souls saved yes. as we continue to grow and work out and live in the stepping stones of God as we grow through the word and as God and the Holy Spirit would lead us into the God stepping stones in this world in the kingdom of God. And may you continue to operate in your gifting as God has purposed you to do. Don't fall slack. Don't fall short. Do what God says do. Don't be lazy. Don't be slowful. Whatever God has laid your hands to do in the kingdom, your purpose, do it with gladness. Do it with enthusiasm. Do it with joy. Don't do it grudgingly because that's where we fall short when we do things grudgingly. You know, let your light so shine that others may want to get some of that God's spirit that you got that you're demonstrating. Yes. To be a blessing to others. To show love and kindness and much understanding, you know, to other people. Stepping stones of God are to be used in our everyday life in the yes. kingdom of God. Yes. Yes. God has purpose for each and every one of us to do things his way, to do his will. Just as he had for Jesus. And Jesus said, hallelujah, Jesus said, I must work. I must work. Hallelujah. I like that. I must work. The work of him that sent me while it is day. Glory to God. Night cometh, but no man can work. My Jesus, my Jesus. No man can work when it get dark, y'all. It's too late. <laughs> uh, so let our work, let us work while it is day. That we may save souls. Help those that need help. Bless those that need encouragement. Hallelujah. Help those that don't know how to help themselves. Oh God, because when night comes, my Lord, when night comes, no man can work. Amen. Because most of the time when night comes, we're dead and gone. Amen. And it's too late. That's right. Come on. The work can't be done That's right. when it's dark and when you're left this earth. So all that you can't do while you're on the earth, it won't be done. That's right. Know that we got to work now while wow, yet yeah, it is still yes, there. Yes. God bless you. Love you. I pray God that somebody got something out of this. Yes, and yes, encourage yes. you. And I bless you.